Hello and welcome to the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop. Before we get the CS2 hybrid build started, I wanted to take a moment and thank our recent additions to the Target Forge membership team. Membership through YouTube allows you, my favorite viewer, to support this channel directly and not allow the media titans of this crazy world to suppress quality outdoor content like we all know they do. Your dollars matter, and I am extremely grateful. Many of you believe enough in the work we do to support us here on the channel. For those that do not wish to contribute monthly, no problem. Money is tight right now, I get it. The thanks button just below the viewing window allows for a single contribution and it lets us know we're on the right path. I will also point out that those of you that made purchases via my Amazon links, you made this project possible. Now, let's get to work. Welcome to the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop. Why a CS hybrid? Well, I don't own an L2, which is the Makita style tool battery powered version of the CS2. And the primary reason I don't own one is that the L2 cannot run on 12 volts DC, really 13.8 on a running vehicle. And your choices for running it are either a Makita clone, or if you pay for it, an AC power supply. I don't have any Makita tools. Mine are nearly all DeWalt save for some 12 volt Bosch stuff. There are adapters to run DeWalt batteries on Makita sockets, but that still leaves the vehicle power off the table and you gotta go out and buy one of these. And that is simply too dang handy for me to write off. It's rare I'm shooting without my truck or my ATV nearby, and I can always use the solar power source I built on this channel. But not having that tool battery option not at me. First build I did, I assumed, incorrectly I might add, that they just used the same motor from the CS2. Nope, that 12 volt DC motor went like mad on 20 volts DC from the DeWalt battery. In fact, it was the fastest deadhead test I had ever seen. I figured a steady diet of that would not work out well for the pump. Enter the CS2 hybrid. Run it on AC, no problem. On your vehicle, no sweat. On your DeWalt power tool batteries? Yep, we got you covered. By the way, DeWalt is the number one power tool brand in America. They sell twice as many tools here as Milwaukee does. And Makita is a very distant third place. I'm not passing judgment on tool brands, but here in America, there are more DeWalt batteries and chargers than any other brand. Why did the manufacturer pick the Makita to copy? No idea. Maybe Makita lawyers are not as intimidating as the Waltz. Who knows? The parts for this build are inexpensive and all available through my Amazon affiliate links. The parts are a DeWalt battery socket with lead wires, a wired fuse holder with 30 amp fuse, an SPDT switch with on, off, on configuration, a high efficiency DC to DC buck converter. This is 30 amps and a power pole socket so we can be cordless when we want to. If you don't have a DeWalt battery, you'll need to get a battery and a charger. And that will add some well spent money to this project. Quality batteries and UL and CE listed chargers are not inexpensive but the security they offer are priceless. Yet another huge plus for the CS2 hybrid over the L2. Once you gather your parts together, you can start your build. If you got any of these cheap clip-on wire connectors, do yourself a favor, throw them away. If they were Wagos, maybe, but cheap electrical connectors that do not let you see the wire position in a high vibration environment, bad medicine, friends. Just get rid of them. 
we want to do this right. The way I wired mine leaves a very tiny current draw on the tool battery when not in use. When I say tiny, it is 0 0.005 amps or 5 milliamps. This is often called quiescent current for the detail curious. If you are not running the compressor for an extended period, pull that battery off. The switch just selects either the cord set or the tool battery feed and supplies one or the other to the pump and fans. The DC to DC converter takes the battery output and drops the voltage to match the motor windings with very good efficiency, I might add, 96%. Either far switch position yields 12 volts to the pump, simple as that. We need to dump the circuit breaker for space and we will add a simple fuse to take its place. Let's see how this plays out. First up, we're just going to mark the hole locations for the screws that will mount the battery holder in place. I'm just going to use a sharpie, get myself a quick little mark, and then we're going to get the spring-loaded center punch out and create a nice clear center punch hole in those uh, hole locations. Now let's pull this cover off so we can drill the holes. Well, can't use a drill without a dang battery on it. It's a good thing I got one right here on the bench. Let's go ahead and punch these holes. They're going to be 632 clearance holes. We'll see how this uh, battery adapter mounts on there. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, just two screw holes. Next thing we're going to do is get these, get the screws that mount the pump removed and out of the way. Now that we've got the pump off, we're going to pull that circuit breaker out, get that out of the way. We're not going to use that anymore in this build. Disconnecting the leads going to the circuit breaker, getting that out of the way. Next up, we're going to get rid of the power cord, get that out of the way, and then we're going to install our power pole panel mount connector. Putting a nice heavy lead on this. Again, you know how I love my uh, red and black zip wire. I think it's really handy for 12 volt work. getting some pins in here for the power pole connector they just snap in right from the back of the connector super solid way to uh, to pass power through a bulkhead next thing up is to drill the hole for that big connector to sit in the panel and I will uh, full, full disclosure here <laughs> I made this hole too big so I had to use some washers to actually reduce the whole diameter so the connector would fit okay. Um, not my finest moment, but hey, you know what? Sometimes, uh, sometimes you make mistakes, and that's okay. Anyway, it connector is just flopping around in that hole, and uh, you'll see in later scenes where I fix it with some washers. Now I'm going to put the hole in for the switch, which goes right in the middle here. Um, that diameter is approximately 7 16 of an inch. Just double checking to make sure the switch actually fits in that hole. And it does. Try it in from the back. Yeah, that's going to look great. Next up is a clip, me just pointing to a schematic that's actually incorrect, but it really is just showing the fuse that we're putting on going into the positive lead for the motor itself. So this fuse exists between the switch and the motor. Definitely getting some heat shrink. This is the, uh, the power pole connector that I used that's panel mount. And I made this harness that just allows you to plug in and adapts to the same connector I used on all my vehicle builds. But this allows you to go cordless when you want to. And um, 
Getting rid of the circuit breaker frees up a lot of space in here. Here we're just going to plunk in some holes in the sheet metal chassis for the DC to DC converter. For anyone that has noticed, when I'm drilling sheet metal, I always use a step drill. And the reason for that is step drills make truly round, very nice holes. And if you use them correctly, you drill through one side, you can flip the product over and clean the holes up from the other side and your burr is almost completely gone. So that's why I, I really like to use them. But we're just gonna get these through the sheet metal and get ready to put our screws in. And the screws I'm using are the same that I used for this. They are 632 by 3 8 um, I've got some nice ones with some built-in internal lock washers, but you use whatever you have. Um, but 632 works well in both spots. Very nice burr free holes. Just to be sure, I, I did check this this width. If you get this centered well enough, you won't interfere with the cushions at all. And this will exist right in here. There we go. DC to DC converter is in. The next thing we're gonna do is attach these leads to everything we need to attach them to. Um, I want to caution everyone, be really, really, really careful about your polarity and your input voltage on these leads. Um, memorize that wiring diagram or take a picture of it with your phone before you bolt this in place so that you know which color is what because you will only get one chance to get this right. And if you happen to hook it up backwards or you put the uh, battery voltage into the wrong end, um, it's not gonna work out well for you. But on this one, the black and the red go to the tool battery. So we'll be attaching those. And then this black and red will go to the motor ground, which is this lead. And to the switch and then the switch already has a fuse on it this guy right here so once we get the switch out i'll show you how all that wiring happens it's super simple don't worry about it all right here we've got the 12 volt lead that goes to the fans and this is the 12 volt that goes to the pump we want those right on the center tab Now this input on this side of the switch, I'm going to take from my power pole panel connector here and I'm going to go into this side. Now if you don't want to spend the money on this, you don't have to, you can just use the stock cord that came with it and not remove it as I did. But I like the idea of being cordless when I'm cordless and only having the cord, which is this now, when I need it. Notice, no alligator clips. God, I hate alligator clips. Again, I'm using butt splices on these that are heat shrink. These are going to go right into our battery connection. Remember, red and black. Go to red and black on here. I will point out the connections we're making right now are between the battery holder and the DC to DC converter.
we go. Batteries to the DC to DC. Now we just got to get the DC to DC to the switch. And we'll be able to put the switch back in its uh, location on the chassis. So this is the positive that's going to the switch. So it's going to get a smaller eyelet. The grounds, I'm going to bring all the grounds together with a bolt and tape that up really good. I was going to try and use a terminal block, but it really got tight. The terminal blocks that are rated for this get kind of bulky. So I'm going to cheat and bring everything together with a single bolt. There we go. All right, this is the last power connection on the switch. So we've got battery power or cord input power. All right, just a couple of wraps of electrical tape around here just to give us a little bit of protection. Um, you know, if this vibrates loose or somebody decides to take it apart with the power connected, um, they won't create a short with those exposed connections. And next up, we're gonna bring the um, input power ground, the DC to DC converter ground, the fan and hour meter ground, and the pump ground all together in a single connection, sometimes called a star ground. All right, I've just got a 1032 with an external star lock washer, grabbing the fans, the pump, the DC to DC, and the input power all together. And I'm gonna put another star lock on the bottom. And then we're gonna get a nut on there. I'm not as worried about the ground connections um, creating an issue, but I'm still going to tighten this pretty good. And I'm gonna make it so that when I wrap the tape, I do get some good insulation on there. There we have it, folks. Electrically, we are ready to go live. In fact, I'm so confident. Let's um, go ahead and throw a battery on here and see what happens. There will be a little delay when you switch it on. That's the DC to DC converter going through its checks, making sure everything's cool, charging up its capacitors before it enables power. There's the switch. And there's the pump. Nice. And then if you threw the switch the other way, if we had this connected, it would run off of that. Okay, so the only thing left to do now is put our switch in its intended location. I do want to flip it around. The reason I turned it around was because I just ran it. I noticed that which switch direction uh, fed on which power, and I wanted the switch this way to run on the cord set, and the switch the other way to run on the um, on the tool battery. All right, now we'll just get all this stuff shoehorned back in there and we'll be good to go. Okay, folks, I screwed up. I put this too far forward, so I'm taking these screws back out and I'm gonna move those holes back. So imagine um, you just saw all the hole moving happen 
and we'll be right back. All right, folks, there we go. I think that's going to fit a whole lot better. I am going to take the time to tuck this down in here with the other wires. Now I think we'll be good to go. Be really, really, really mindful at this point in your build that you don't pinch any of your beautifully done wiring uh, between metal surfaces. You, it will definitely lead to a bad day. Make sure you double check that you haven't crushed any wires along the way. You want these wires to drop down in this groove? Don't pinch anything. The other thing you're going to need to do is unbolt your head, turn it 90 degrees. You can still use the handle if you want to, but you can also get my either the 3D files for this little uh, handle eliminator. It's just a little 3D printed adapter that you can thread in this hole and it will hold your input filter to keep the dust and debris out of the compressor. But with that, we are going to pop our battery on. And now we're going to take the cord set that I made. We're going to pop it in down here. We're going to bring that AC power supply over to generate our 12 volts. Here is the compressor on line power. And here is the compressor on battery power. Little delay, waiting for the DC to DC to say it's okay. There we go. Friends, I gotta tell you, I really love how this project turned out. I have been running the heck out of this thing, and I know this is a really huge DeWalt battery. It is a nine amp hours, and I believe the nine amp hours on this battery is probably the truth. Other batteries, I, don't, I think they're kind of optimistic. They just don't fill me with confidence that they're really what they say they are. But I have run the wheels off this thing so far with this big, huge battery. And I still have one bar left on the battery. And I have filled my FX Crown. I have filled my HW44 pistol. I filled my um, 1720T pistol, which was empty. And I also topped off my one liter tank. And even with all the test runs that I did, I still have one bar of battery left, so it's not quite dead yet. Um, we're going to run it all the way down and see, make sure that the uh, battery doesn't quit or um, the DC to DC doesn't shut off for a low voltage. I mean, it will protect itself, which is what you want. But anyway, uh, I encourage you guys to build these. Uh, give them a try. I, I don't have much durability information on these yet, but I can say they are built really, really well. This is a die cast aluminum housing with full potting. So these are pretty solid. There's nothing serviceable in here. And do be very careful when you wire these that you connect them correctly because you're only going to get one shot. If you hook them up backwards or put the power into the wrong end, um, you, will, you will take this out. Now, it's not a lot of money, so you can replace it pretty easy. Anyway. That's all I've got for you today with the CS2 Hybrid, which I think is a much better option for everyone than the L2. And uh, you won't have to buy one of these because you'll get one with the CS2. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Have an awesome day. And don't forget to be a light in the darkness.